Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker and today we're going to go over the 2020 Radiance 26RE by Cruiser RV. This of course the RE standing for Rear Entertainment Floor Plan and basically what you have is a slide over here with a dinette and a sofa and that sofa for the most part is across from the TV giving you the rear entertainment space. In its essence, this is a small couples model, but it has a couple great features like the TV setup as well as a nice big bathroom and a residential king size bed. One of the other things I love about it is the kitchen and the main reason for it is because of the countertops. Even though this is a lightweight, they call it an ultralight, this one runs about 5,700 pounds. Uh, so even though it's an ultralight travel trailer, they still put in solid surface countertops, which obviously add weight, but for me, it is 100% a trade-off that is worth it. It adds a ton of uh, durability and aesthetics. I love the looks of a true solid surface. And of course, it allows you to undermount the sink as they have done. And then they put a sink top cover in here so you get usable prep space. Now, that sink is an undermount stainless steel bowl. It is a single bowl. Uh, I know people that go both ways with the single bowl or double bowl, depending on what you want. I, there, just like everything else in the RV industry, there are pros and cons to both. With that, you get a high-rise faucet here. Uh, I, pro I wish it would have been a, a pull-out. You know, it's not, and it's still fine. I mean, you have a ton of space. I just like the functionality of a pull-out. You know, I have it at home. I, you get used to it. And so some of these things I like to see in an RV as well. Definitely not necessary, just an added bonus. But you will see they went with an oil rub bronze finish, which not a lot of manufacturers are doing right now. And they kept the, that same look throughout the pulls. If you take a look at the pulls up top, you'll see all that is oil rubbed. Um, which, you know, is good because they have a lot of light interiors. You'll see the wall board and everything in here is light. The ceiling board is light, light countertops. So they offset it, you know, they're able to offset that with some darker finishes. As far as an electrical outlet, you have one right underneath there in case you need to plug in your coffee maker or anything, a light there as well. Uh, moving on down a little bit further, microwave and then your slimline hood with a light and a fan. Naturally, underneath that hood is your three burner cooktop recessed with the glass cover. So you can use this as prep space too. Fold it up in back like so to open up those three burners, the front one being high output. Furion cooktop, so you, you have light up knobs. So if you flip the switch up, you light it down, it's the knobs and the light in the oven so you can see what you're baking. Underneath, so we'll open this up. You can see here you do have a little bit of storage. Personally, I wish that they wouldn't have had um, you know the, the shelf in there. I would have liked to have had a spot to put a trash can. That's just a personal preference because I hate having to you know, tie my trash bag to one of my poles. But, uh, you know, again, I guess let me know what, you, what your guys' thoughts are. This is something I definitely do like, though, is a built-in spot for your flatware, built-in divider. That way I don't have to put in a plastic one. I think this just looks a lot nicer, works perfectly well. And you have two more full extension drawers, including this nice deep one on the bottom. So that way if you have some larger items, like I like to take an apple core when we go, that way it's quick and easy to cut up that apple for the kids or you know sometimes I'll take my immersion blender for protein shakes things like that and that makes it super simple. You will see here you have the Everchill 12 volt compressor driven refrigerator. Open this guy up. Uh, this thing's wonderful. You know it's uh, very low energy consumption. You can see you have a crisper drawer right down on the bottom with your humidity control. Little travel lock here as well. Nothing super spectacular but it does the trick. And then as you come in a little bit further, we get into the entertainment center. You'll see some storage there as well as a little bit up top. Behind this, when we go outside, you'll see there is a refrigerator outside. So that way, you know, you have a spot for your beverages, which is pretty cool. And as I mentioned, for the most part, the TV is across from the, uh, di or from the sofa. You also have a good view from the dinette. So I like the fact it is angled in this floor plan because basically no matter where you're sitting, well, unless you're in this dinette seat looking that way, uh, but pretty much uh, anywhere else, you do have a, a pretty decent shot to the uh, TV. Underneath that is your multimedia center. That, of course, being Bluetooth capable. Uh, also a DVD player. And then right down underneath that, your fireplace. So cool thing about a fireplace is not only does that look nice, but it's also an electric space heater. Now with that, you will see a switch right over here to this side. And this switch is to turn the fireplace on and off. Now. With these, they do that so it's, because this is a 30 amp unit. If it's a 50 amp, you don't need the switch. So one of these will let the fireplace run. When you flip it the other way, it's hooked up to one of two things. And to be honest, I'm not sure because I don't have this plugged into shore power. It's either going to be hooked up to your microwave or your AC. So if you run in the fireplace, one of those two won't work. Again, I'm not sure which one it is here in the Radiance because I don't currently have shore power. But uh, those, are your, those three in this RV are your big 
energy consuming things, right? Microwave, huge power spike when you turn it on. Fireplace, same thing. It's a big electric heater. And then when your AC condenser kicks on, same deal. So that's how that works. Underneath, good additional storage in the back. I do like this. It's deep enough that it is usable. Uh, you also have a window here to let in natural light. Speaking of, you have that along the entire slide as well. All windows, they didn't put storage up top, so that way you just have a ton of window space. Right down underneath is a tri-fold sofa. Great thing about this is not only is it comfortable to sit in, it has built-in armrests, but also this does pull out into a pretty decent bed, folks. So if you have additional guests and you want them to stay the night, uh, that is something you can do. Here, I'll... We'll kind of show you how this one works. Most tri-folds are, are very similar. They'll have small, subtle differences. This one, as you can see, is pretty easy. You take the cushions off just like that, fold the legs down just like so, boom. Take the back, fold this down, and there you go, sleeping peacefully. Um, so, as I said, it, it is pretty easy to make up, and if you have guests, you want a place for them to stay, there it is. The cool thing about that too is the fact it's in the back of the RV, so it's not uh, you know, hindering you from getting around anywhere. They can still get up, use the bathroom, do whatever else you need to do. Dinette is located right next to that. Decent sized dinette. Uh, Radiance does have some with some bigger floor, or some other floor plans with larger dinettes, but this one still has plenty of room for four people on either side. You know, I'm six foot tall. You can see here I have no issues. I have good space between my torso and the table. Same thing with my legs here. This also drops down into a bed, but it's not going to be nearly the size of the trifold. And underneath that, you got some storage. Over to this side here, more storage. Just kind of show you, you know, kind of what you're working with there. Nothing too terribly deep, but, you know, I'm sure you can make something work in there. There is a coat rack. I do like the fact that that is right next to the entryway. Come in, hang your jackets up, your uh, scarves, whatever else you may have. Thermostats located here, that does control your ducted AC as well as your heat. Flip that on, here in the corner, foot flush lever toilet with the door shut. I still have plenty of room, as I mentioned just a minute ago, I'm six foot tall, no issues. However, it is a plastic bowl. Now again, part of that is because this is supposed to be a lightweight travel trailer. I personally would replace that with porcelain. I think the added weight is 100% worth it. That's just me, but um, just kind of let you know, that's what it is. Open up the shower, neo-angle shower. The doors are in a roller track. When I step inside of here, I'll show you again. I'm, as I said, six foot. You can see, you know, I say that. Technically, it's like, I'm like a quarter inch short, but close enough. Um, when, I, when I step in here, you can see I can move around. I have plenty of space, no issues whatsoever. With that skylight, you can be 6'3", maybe even 6'4", and still be able to stand in here and shower, which is great. When I step outside, you have the mirrored medicine cabinet. You'll see there, uh, plug-in, oil rub bronze fixture, and underneath you have some storage there, plenty of room for uh, you know, any other bathroom accessories you have to toss in there. When you make your way into the bedroom, you'll see there are two entrances and exits. You have a slider door from the bathroom, as well as a uh, door right over here off to the side, so a couple different ways to come in, which is important because this is a king bed, and as you can see, you don't have a ton of room to move, you know, kind of scoot around there. So having an entrance to get into your side of the bed is pretty important. But folks, this is a residential size 72 by 80 inch king size bed. So that's wonderful if you're a taller person, you know, you don't have to worry about your feet hanging off. You have plenty of room. You're not going to elbow each other. If you want a new mattress, you can buy a residential mattress. All these great things that come with it. Like anything else in the RV industry, there are cons to it as well. And one of the main ones, in my opinion, besides not having a lot of space here because of the length, is the fact that you get smaller wardrobes. Not a huge deal, but you know, when you have the, the king size bed, it is wider, so your wardrobe space just isn't quite as large. You do have more storage space overhead though, so you know, I guess take it for what it's worth. You'll see you have an LED light strip here as well as a light underneath, plus a light on the ceiling. Light on the ceiling is actually controlled by uh, your main control panel out in your kitchen, so if you're wondering how to turn that off, besides up on the ceiling, how to turn it on and off, that's the place to do it. And if you want a TV in the bedroom, Right over there, you will see where they uh, have a sticker so you know where to mount it. And of course, the connections for it are up on the ceiling. Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at some of the outside features on the 2020 Radiance 26RE. Up front is a power tongue jack, making it easier to hook up and disconnect from your tow vehicle. Of course, there's a light on there if you're hooking up or disconnecting at night. And like all power tongue jacks, this one does have a manual override in the rare event that it fails. 
Behind that, you have two 20-pound propane tanks and a cover, rails here for your battery. Uh, I did forget to mention this, but inside, there is a battery disconnect. So, though you don't have one out here, there is one in there on the main control panel, so that way you can push that in, and it will kill all power to the RV, so you don't have that slow uh, parasitic drain on there. You'll also see the diamond plating up front, have to protect that front end from rocks and debris that may get thrown up by your tow vehicle. The three-quarter front cap with LED lights inlaid in it, and around to the side, you have your uh, fully laminated sidewalls. They do use Asdell composite in here behind the fiberglass. That's a pretty big deal. One, it helps with weight. Uh, it's definitely much lighter than Luon. Two, it won't absorb moisture or water like Luon does, so you have less chance to get the, the uh, bubbling effect on there. Uh, the delamination is what it's uh, commonly known as. And also, it, uh, the, the Asdell is a green material, so it won't have the off-gassing like Luon often has. The other thing I like about this, and maybe this is just me, but I like the, the graphics pattern, right? It's a little bit more modern, you know, a little bit more color blocking and less uh, swirls and swoops. Again, personal preference, let me know what you guys think. You know, do you like this? Are you looking for something else? I know that the, the swirls and swoops are, you know, they've had their time, it, it looks kind of tacky. What do you guys think of the exterior? Let me know in the comments section. We'll open this guy up, this of course being your pass-through, you have a covered hinge on here, so you have a bunch of rust coming down the door. It is slam latch like so, and then you'll also see it's magnetic, so you can put it up just like that, super easy to operate. Inside you have the large pass-through, you can see that it is pretty big, LED light strip running the whole length, and if you take a look right here, you'll also see that you have a clothes hamper. Now, I personally like it, if, or I would have preferred it if they put the clothes hamper on the other side, because with it here, you put a laundry basket there, it kind of impedes your pass-through because this is mainly where you'll be accessing items, but uh, a small thing on, on my part, I guess. Down underneath, you have the um, powered stabilizer jacks. Brain dead today, I, I need more sleep. My newborn is totally killing my sleep. Anyway, uh, power stabilizer jacks down there. This front one operates the front two, the back one, of course, operates the rear two. Power awning on here too, touch a button to roll that out, same thing to go back in, and a LED light strip underneath so you have light at night. The entrance to the 26RE has your larger foldable grab handle, so that way from the very first step all the way in, you have control, and of course it also has the more ride step above step system on here, which is much more solid than your traditional pullout. You have aluminum steps which don't rust, and the grip tape there for added traction as well. Making it back a little bit further, aluminum alloy wheels which don't rust, easy lube hubs for easier maintenance so you don't have to pack the bearings nearly as often. Right here is your fresh tank fill, so if you're going somewhere you don't have city water, you want to make sure to fill the fresh tank, that is the place to do it. Outside TV hookups, now there's not a spot to mount it to my knowledge, so you will have to bring a uh, you know, little table or something to set that on, but it does have that. Uh, also, it's worth mentioning the outside speakers underneath the power awning there. So you do have a couple outside speakers, LED light strip on the power awning too. And then in the back, as I mentioned, we were inside, is the outside fridge. I personally love this on a couple's model. You know, um, I like to have a couple beers when I go, or, you know, maybe some pop or something like that. This gives me a spot to where I can put that. Uh, also, you know, condiments and stuff you can toss right in there. You have a spot to... Uh, I want to say <laughs> tie up your loved ones, but please don't tie up children. Uh, but for pets, you do have a spot where you can tie your pets up at. Pretty convenient to have right there on your trailer. Also, square tubular bumper. Pull out the end caps. Gives you a spot in which you can store your sewer hose. Also, your spare tire is mounted to that. As I mentioned inside with the switch on the fireplace, 30 amp detachable power cord plugs in right there. Cable and satellite inlets are on the back. Like most travel trailers these days, if you look up top, you'll also see this one has backup camera prep. So if you want a backup camera, having that prep does make it easier to install that camera, meaning it'll save you money on labor. And as you move up a little bit further, city water inlets located right here directly underneath that black tank flush, so you no longer have to stick a hose down your toilet to wash out your black tank. You just hook it up right there. Spray port here for outside water access. Not the most convenient spot, but hey, you know, after you're done dumping your tanks, you want to wash your hands, that gives you capability to do it. Speaking of dumping tanks, this one does have two terminations. You will see one here, of course your black and gray tank valves are there, and if you take a look in the back, you'll see right behind the axles is your other one. Another thing to mention while we're down here, this one does have fully enclosed, insulated, and heated underbelly. So, as long as you have the furnace running, it is blowing heat down there, making sure that your tanks don't freeze up on you. 
bear in mind though, the valves are exposed. So don't plan on taking this in you know, uh, below zero climates because your valves will more than likely freeze up on you. Right up front, you will see solar prep. You want solar, simply buy the portable panels, plug it in right there, and it'll trickle charge your battery. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is a 2020 Radiance 26RE. If you're interested in this travel trailer and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also in the comments section, let me know what you think they nailed, what you think they missed, or if you were designing this RV, what you would change. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.